Who of you actually reads privacy policies? Okay. Now let me rephrase that question. Who of you reads each and every privacy policy he or she encounters online? Never. There is a good reason for that. According to a study conducted in Carnegie Mellon University, Alicia McDonald and uh, Lori Karner, they found that an average, the average reading speed of an individual is 250 words per minute. The average privacy policy is just above 2,500 words. So basically, if I were to read a privacy policy, it would take me 10 minutes. We encounter 1,462 privacy policies per year, and those are just unique privacy policies. So plugging in the numbers, it would take us 244 hours annually to read privacy policies. That means if I were to read privacy policies eight hours a day, it would take me 30.5 days annually. Now, the, the uh, infographic visual visualization to your left is basically by Lori Lewis and Chad Callahan of Comilus Media. It tells you what happened in one internet minute. Can you imagine the amount of data? 187 million emails are sent in 60 seconds. 38 million WhatsApp messages. And 481,000 tweets. You are the creators of this data. You are the people putting this data online and providing it to enterprises. Kuwait according to World Web Stats, is, the high, is one of the highest in internet penetration. And we've been growing. Now it's 99.8%. So that means each and every individual of us might have one, two, or three internet connections. One for his mobile, probably the tablet, and another is through the home Wi-Fi. So basically, when we think about who could access our data, we usually think about content. Search engines, social media platforms, as well as maybe video sharing platforms. Now, this is, this is true, they have this data, but devices also have your data. Devices know when you switched off the lights yesterday to sleep. Could you imagine that? And we tend to forget the pipes the connections between devices and content. So pipes are the internet service providers and the telecom companies. So, although content, search engines, uh, social media platforms, they have domain-specific data. A search engine would know what you're querying online. A social media platform would know what exactly is your social activity online. But it's still domain-specific. Now, telecom isn't domain specific. Telecom has all your data from devices to content, everything that you're doing, plus your phone calls, your SMSs, just records of them. Now, let me tell you how people, how enterprises get value from this data, how they make profit from this data. So, back in the years, it was all about historic data reporting the area of business intelligence. So this is basically descriptive analytics where value is minimal. However, it's easy, not very complex to get this data. It's about what has happened. How much of product X, product X did I sell last year or last month? How many customers have left me last month? It's all historical. Moving forward is diagnostic analytics. It's basically regarding causality why things have happened. Why didn't I sell enough from this product? Why are these customers leaving me? So this cause and effect relationship makes it more important for companies. Now, the area of data science, which is very important. In the old days, we thought statistics isn't important at all. We used to go to classes of mathematics thinking, what am I going to do with this? But in reality, Mathematics and programming put together, put together gave us lots of abilities. Predictive analytics is basically what will happen. So the question is, for example, which customers are leaving me next month? And I know this early on. 
which product, which customers would buy this product next month. The final area where data is most valuable is pres prescriptive analytics. It's basically the decision-making engine. So you get predictive analytics, you forecast what's gonna happen, and based on that, you take decisions. For, for instance, if I know that these, this list of customers is leaving me, I would send them offers to retain them. Now the buzzword, big data. We've all heard about it, but what exactly is big data? So big data is all about data processing. It's not analytics. We use these words interchangeably, data science, analytics, big data, but in reality, it's all about data processing. Now big data has three characteristics. They call them the three Vs. Volume, velocity, and variety. Let's start with volume. So basically volume is all about terabytes, probably even megabyte, um, petabytes of data. And it's also about the number of records, 5 million, 500 million, billions transactions, how many transactions, probably millions and billions. This is important. Big data has allowed us to process all these volumes, but variety is also important. So when we think about data, we tend to think about text. We think that data is only text. Now that's not true. Data could come in the form of text, images, audio, video. And big data has allowed us to process all these data. The third V, velocity. It's basically about the speed of data. Ever went into this shopping mall and got a retailer campaign as an SMS? Think about it. That's probably because your operator has partnered with a retailer. Once you enter the mall through location analytics, they have identified your location and the SMS was sent. So this is real-time data processing and real-time analytics. There is, of course, near real-time, where a delay is probably a minute, maybe up to half an hour. And there is batch processing, which is daily routines of processing. Now, let me tell you about the trends. Business intelligence uh, is not getting so much attention these years. It's decreasing in attention. This is the area of historical data. However, big data and data science are really picking up. This image has been done through Google Trends, basically. It's about search queries regarding the three concepts. Now, we've talked about data processing. We've talked about data science and analytics. But the real thing is when you put these two together. So basically, this image is probably taken from a CCTV camera. Big data has allowed us to process this image. Now, after processing this image, this image, is, by the way, it's about campaigns, two people looking at campaigns through CCTV cameras. After processing this image, data science did the work. Data science through facial recognition and analysis has identified the demographics of both individuals. It has identified that the gentleman is a male, the lady is a female, it identified their age groups. It went even further with psychometric measures. They know the degree of happiness once they watch that bill billboard, the degree of frustration from each individual's face, the degree of anger, and the degree of disgust. Analytics could be as simple as uh, uh, retail analytics, uh, you can use data basically to optimize shelving within supermarkets. It could be for fraud detection in banks. It could be for uh, medical use as well. So in medical use, big data has allowed us to process images. And think about that, MRIs, sonars. We could detect tumors more quickly, more accurately with big data. The third industry, which I'm a fan of, I have uh, one of my managers, early managers sitting here. So the third industry is the telecom industry. And within the telecom industry, I, I have worked eight years in telecom, working on data, data monetization strategies before I switched to continue my research. And here, they have all the data. They use this data for customer acquisition. They use it to predict churners, who are the customers that are leaving me for competitors. 
and they use it for social network analysis. So, to the left is a data set from the telecom industry. In this data set, it's basically called detail records. Your calls, SMSs, are being written in the database. So this data set has the caller's ID, or the caller's number, the recipient's number, the call duration, and the time of the call. In a database, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be valuable unless you visualize it correctly. So social network analysis has allowed us to visualize this data like the example on the right. The example on the right shows us communities from just phone calls. Imagine. So I know that number two, central, is a leader within a community. All the people around him are followers. For example, Nede Shimmeri has organized this event today. And Nede, within the speakers community, she's the leader. She called all of us. So basically, Nede would be a leader and the speakers would be followers within this community. There are also bridges. I might have my own community. I'm a follower of Nede's community, but I might be a leader in my own community. So the degree of relationship is measured here by call duration and call frequency. So don't you have better relations or closer rela relations with people you call more often or with people that you have longer conversations with? And this is also calculated. The future. By the way, uh, just going back here, this can be also applied in social media. It doesn't have to be telecom. Instead of having measures of duration and frequency, we can have measures of number of fall post posts, number of messages between two individuals. The future. So the Internet of Things is the future. What's the Internet of Things? It's basically when your fridge is connected to the Internet or when your oven, coffee maker, is connected to the internet. Today, smartwatches allowed us to connect to the internet. Your heartbeats are online. Imagine having your heartbeats online, merging this data with other data as well. What could I know about you? I know about your health. I could analyze reactions to certain things. So there is an increase in data volumes through IoT. And IoT is coming soon, very soon and an increase in surveillance while the data volumes increase. Now, I want you to walk out, out of here knowing that you are the creators of data. These organizations depend on your data. When you clicked that I agree button, not reading the privacy policy, it's when you gave consent to them to store, analyze, and even share your data. I want you to at least know how this data is being utilized, especially in Kuwait, where we are all attached to our mobiles, tablets. And I don't want you to isolate yourself. This is not about isolation. It's about finding convenience between data privacy and your own convenience. Thank you very much. Abdul Hablatiji.